Welcome to Crypto Mastery Class, where we make crypto easy to understand and simple to invest in. We're going to go over some news, look at the overall market, which is super exciting today. We'll look at some hot movers in the basket. And most importantly, we'll quickly review indicators. And it's all about you today. So most importantly, ask your questions. So oh, this is a really exciting, guys. Ethereum price analysis. Ethereum spikes above $1,500 after a strong bullish run by Narman on Cryptopolitan.com. So today's Ethereum price analysis shows a bearish trend gaining momentum with bullish possibilities. Ethereum USD is currently trading at $1,569, up 5.64% in the past 24 hours, with a trading volume of 28 billion dollars wow the market kept yesterday in tremendous momentum and is opening today with hopeful bullish signs adding to yesterday's spike above the 1600 mark in addition the volatility decreases giving the bulls more opportunity for a tremendous comeback the live market cap of ethereum is 190 billion dollars and it ranks number two in cryptocurrency rankings Ethereum USD four hour analysis, latest developments. Ethereum price analysis indicates market volatility following a decreasing trend, which means that Ethereum USD prices are decreasingly prone to fluctuating volatility. The Bollinger Band's upper limit is 1,621, which acts as the most substantial resistance for Ethereum. Controversially, the lower limit for the Bollinger's Band is available at 1,212, which serves as the most, most vital support for Ethereum. The price of Ethereum USD appears to cross over the moving average curve, signifying a bullish movement. Moreover, bulls have been taking care of the market for the last few hours and will maintain their momentum. However, the price appears to show increasingly dynamics by moving towards the resistance. The trend might soon shift as the market moves towards a breakout. However, there is also a strong possibility that the bulls will maintain their momentum and move in for a robust long time re regime. Rain, rain. <laughs> okay, next we have Galaxy Digital's Mike Novakratz says Bitcoin could hit 500,000 by 2027. And this is by Max on seekingalpha.com. So Galaxy Digital CEO Mike Novakratz said Tuesday that Bitcoin BTC USD will likely reach 500,000 within the next five or so years, given its unique properties and adoption growth. That implies a roughly 625% jump from the token's November peak of $68,900, despite ongoing financial contagion effects in the crypto market resulting in widespread price depreciation and wealth destruction. The world's largest digital token by market cap is tailor-made to being an anti-inflammatory store of value, he said during the 2022 Bloomberg Crypto Summit, adding that it is easily transferable and so it's better than gold, XAUUSD, C-U-R, in so many ways. Novakrat. A former global macro investor pointed out that debt-driven global economy is fueling high consumer price inflation and Bitcoin BTC USD may serve as a unique way to store wealth over the long term. In contradiction to Novakrat's remarks about Bitcoin BTC USD being an inflation hedge, DPI has been soaring its highest since 1981 over the past year. Though Bitcoin has been slumping well over 60% from its peak in November, suggesting that crypto doesn't necessarily protect wealth during inflationary cycles. Bear in mind that this is the first time the emerging crypto ecosystem has seen a spike in global inflation. So it'll be interesting to see where Bitcoin's BTC USD popularity and price go from here. Recently changing hands at 22.1 thousand as of shortly before 10 a.m. Eastern Standard. On the adoption front, we continue to see institutions in Europe 
the Middle East, the U.S., who haven't been involved yet, who see this as an opportunity, Novocrat said. In June, Novocrat said the crypto market is nearing a bottom. Now, the next article you're going to see is on the flip side. It's not super happy, but it's good to have these multiple viewpoints. So that's why I wanted you guys to see this one. This may be a fake pump, warns analyst, warns analyst Will the Bulls Be Trapped by Shahana Viphute on Coinpedia.com. Bitcoin price is yet again climbing high after a brief consolidation aiming to secure levels above the crucial resistance close to 22,400 by the end of today's the day's trade. On the other hand, the altcoins also have gained significant bullish momentum, which is assisting them to keep up the upward trajectory. However, some predictions forecast a diverse stand for seeing a notable drop as the current rally cannot be trusted. A popular crypto analyst in a series of tweets explains why he feels that the crypto space is within the bullish captivity. Therefore, an upswing encountered will be flipped with no time within no time. Lowercase I, uppercase L, Bill Capo of crypto, who had predicted the BTC price collapse, believes the sellers have still retained their dominance. We have here. What we have here is Bitcoin is basically a range. Now, the key is known if it's accumulation, if it's accumulation or redistribution. So range is small compared to the other ones. Accumulations are usually big. Funding is mostly positive. OL building up like crazy. Positions opening and CVD increasing a lot, which means that the longs are aping very aggressively. In my opinion, this is clearly redistribution. Longs trapped in the same setup we have been seeing these months while indicators are bearish. Also, if you zoom out, you can see a lot of hidden bearish divergences forward, I'm sorry, formed by the W4 and meaning that the big W5 is missing. I remain out of the market. The analyst says that Bitcoin is swinging still in a range and it's now important to determine whether the asset is in an accumulation or redistribution phase. Moreover, the swinging range is small and the accumulations are pretty big while funding is mostly positive. On the other hand, the open interest is also mounting up heavily along the cumulative cumulative volume data, delta. Hence, the analyst believes the longs may be apt, meaning aped, meaning may be slaughtered. The analysts also point out towards a lot of hidden bearish divergence, which may be visible if zoomed out of the market and the indicators are also notably bearish. Therefore, the current spike may just be a temporary one, while the length may be trapped for a longer time. However, he feels that Bitcoin's BTC price may retrace in the coming days. So I want to bring that to you guys because what do we always say? Take profit often. So I thought this article would be so substantial for you guys to just take me seriously. Take profit often. So with that said, let's check out the overall market. Let's see the growth that's happening. And we can have a little momentary celebration because if the bearish chop comes, then at least we have this moment of happiness. All right. So we have right now, you're looking at the market cap on a one week basis actually oh, i'm sorry this is a one month perspective of the market cap because i wanted to zoom out on this one so that you could see the growth that's happened on a longer scale so i've highlighted the one trillion dollar line and currently we're at 1.029 trillion dollars very exciting now on coin 360 you guys can get the heat maps and this is for my visual learners this is the overall one week market 
performance in market cap block size. So that means that the squares are bigger and smaller based on how much money overall is being invested in this particular asset. The three shades of green mean the light is one step up, sorry for that misprint, um, in price, and the medium green is two steps up in price. For that example, I have Bitcoin, it is the medium green, and the dark green means three steps up in price, thus you have Ethereum, and I put the arrow showing that Ethereum went up 41% in the last week. Woo! So I did the little wow and the clap, clap, clap. Very exciting. So you guys can go to coin360.com and you can check out the performance and the arrow shows on the top left hand corner that you can click on that seven days and you could look at different time performances depending on your trading uh, time frames that you like to look at. And then beyond the block size, you can also change those block sizes to volume sizes. Just remember that the volume means in and out. It's not just in or not just out. So it doesn't necessarily mean volume is good because it depends on what side of the fence you're on if you're buying or selling that market. All right, so we're going to review the quick indicators now. Um, actually, we're going to look at the indicators and we're going to look at Bitcoin and Ethereum right now on their charts. But if these are something that you guys want to use, then you want to go to cryptomastery.online to get a subscription. So here's Bitcoin one week performance with the radar indicator. And what's beautiful about this is it takes four charts and turns into one. So on the lower right hand corner, you can see that it's telling us on a one hour basis average what's happening to Bitcoin. It's going up on a four hour basis. What's happening? It's going up. That's what the green area means. And then the arrow and then the 1D stands for one day and the 1W stands for one week. So all in all, Bitcoin is going up in all three of those time frames. Now you can customize this also to different time frames, and you can add multiple radars too. So it's it's a beautiful, beautiful tool that I absolutely adore. So there is Bitcoin as of this morning, and here is the Bitcoin one week chart with crypto mastery indicators. So this is the whole kit and caboodle. So right now the early reversal has not come in yet which is interesting because of that article we just read, right? It could be just a uh, maybe not accumulation, it could be just redistribution. And then you have the trend and the trend line is still red. For, and this is on a one week chart that you're looking at, right? But the TSI is going up for Bitcoin for the one week. And the signal line is getting tight. You can see the signal line on the lower right hand side, it's red. So it's getting tighter and tighter. So let's see, um, you know, maybe we get that switch within the week and um, and we'll see if it's going to be a long term hold or if it's a short term up. And then the volatility index is very exciting, you guys. So whether this is a short term upswing, um, I'm still super excited that the volatility is in the oversold range of 7.53. So um that is exciting. You know, I'm always like to buy something at the most discounted price possible. So um, it'll be exciting to see what I decide to do this week, whether I'm, you know, tiptoeing into the market or hanging back just to see if by any chance we get a lower Bitcoin. I'll let the indicators determine that. So now we have the Ethereum chart. We have one week performance with the radar indicator. And again, it turns that radar turns four charts into one and you can customize the radar times by clicking the little icon on the left that says radar. So for Ethereum, it says at this point, when I took the screenshot, it was at $1,528. For four hours, it was going down and one day it was going down. But for the one week and the one month average, it was going up. So makes sense. I mean, you go up 41% in one week, somebody's going to take profit right? Super, super exciting for them. And then we have the Ethereum one week performance chart with the crypto mastery indicators. And on the right hand side, we have the early reversal. I wanted to take note that you see how the candlesticks on the early reversal upper right hand corner, they're below the lowest line. Those are counter bands. They're averages of where typical the price will typically come to in stages. So if you can see Ethereum just went right up to the bottom of that um, the Keltner band and it's still in the red. So if you just take your eyes quickly go down to the volatility index indicator on the bottom, 
those redness of those indicators represent what zone it's in in the volatility index. So that early reversal indicator is amazing. It is telling us, hey, we're still an oversold. So super sale basically. And it's at 11.61 in specifically, and 20 is the highest of the oversold band. So once it gets beyond 20, then the color turns into black and it's not there yet. So all in all, even though Ethereum went up 41%, it's still on discount. And then you have, if you go down to the trend indicator, you know, and this is a one week chart. So it hasn't flipped up for um, weekly momentum yet as far as the trend goes. But the radar is showing it up for the week. Um, then you have the trend strength says that it's been trend strength indicator came in the TSI came in this is the second week it's come in as an upswing and the signal line you can see how it's closing in and so the red and the gold are about touching and typically that happens when you're going to have a switch so each one of these indicators is a good point to to inch your way into a market depending on your time frame of when you want to get in and when you want to get out and everybody's risk assessment is different so none of this can be financial advice. It's just intended to help you guys understand how to use the technology and how to make good sound decisions so that you maximize your income producing activities when you do jump in a market and to get you in during the safest time frames. All right, so now we have a basket that we've been looking at for about a year. So we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. And most of these can be found on Coinbase. So we're going to check out some hot movers in the basket today. So our basket online um, on TradingView goes beyond that minuscule basket I just showed you. Those ones I just showed you are more of long-term long -term goals, right? And these are just what is on Coinbase and what's available to us. And this is what's trending up for the one day and one week. And I cleansed my watch list by sorting out and looking at the radar to see what the radar said was up for one week and one day. So I've done the homework for you guys. That is it right now that is up. And you can see the highest one is MANA USD, which is a coin for Decentraland, which is the metaverse. It's up 6.75%. So the watch list coins, you can organize by the percentage of change, the amount of change in price, the last price, the symbol name. You can also add subsections to your watch list to better organize what is ready to buy versus what is ripe and ready to sell. And these coins are up for the day, but I always look for the coins on the floor to be ready for your next low buy. So the crypto screener review. So I just pulled this today. This is a one day analyst chart and it's a coin based coins sorted by technical rating. So I'll show you in just a second on how to do that. And right now I just clicked on the technical rating until strong buy was coming up top. So there's some new coins on here, um, C98, FIS, MEDA, MATH, Math, PAX, ATA, W, Ample, and Unify, BUSD, and then USDT and USDC, those are stable coins, and then the USD, USDT and USD are all stable coins. So don't recommend buying stable coins. They're not going to do anything for you. So here's where you click on filter when you're in crypto screen or on trading view. And then you can click on the exchange area and a, an arrow will come up and it'll be a drop down. You can select Coinbase. And then this is another option is you can have your watch list color coded. Now you can only select one color to look at on the crypto screen or to do a deep down numerical analysis. And you would just take that flag color, you would select it on the left hand side where it says ticker 13 matches, click on that little flag, and then you would have like four or five 
maybe six or seven different colors that you can choose from. Just make sure that you select the right color in your watch list, and then it'll pull up just those coins. So, you know, if, may, imagine you just wanted to look at the coins that we keep in our basket, and then those are the only ones you want to look at, which is better to simmer down on what you're looking at and have less than more. And you can change the time frame here. So this is currently at one week, and there's a drop down box there that you can use to change it to multiple time, different time frames. And then you have moving average rating, which we just saw before, where the options or what pops up from trading view is strong buy, buy, sell, or strong sell. And then as you see in this particular example, neutral is where Cardano is. So these are not current today prices. This is just a slide for training the other thing i want you to know is what every little the acronym stand for so sma 20 stands for simple moving average 20 simple moving average 50 days and sma 200 is 200 days and those little arrows and the s's and the arrows and the b's that stands for sell or buy so we're going to just quickly run through the indicators and you can get onto the members area of Crypto Mastery and there'll be more videos on it. But the indicators that we use are volatility index, ERI, which is early reversal indicator, dynamic ATR, all true range, trend indicator, TSI, trend strength indicator is what that stands for, radar screener and the signal line. So the radar, it's what I use to organize the watch list. And you guys saw the radar on Ethereum and Bitcoin earlier. So you get four time frames, and you can customize your time frames by touching on that little um, spoke. And then here's just a quick slide so you can see that when you are customizing your time frames, this little box pops up, and you can do drop downs and change it to shorter time frames or longer time frames depending on your risk assessment. And then you have the trend indicator. It's used to set alerts. And what you have is the bell comes in and it says, well, first of all, the key comes in first and says, hey there, we have a key opportunity coming. And then the bell comes in saying, all right, ding dong, it's time to make a move if you're gonna make a move. And then the one, two, three, four, five, and a six and a seven come in, except for the five on my particular chart is the five is a dollar sign and the seven is a money bag. and that's because we all need constant reminders to saying, take profit, take profit. You know, even if it's not as much as you want it to be, when it moves up, it goes down. And it's a good, good, good reminder having the money bag and the money sign saying, take your money. <laughs> all right. Then we have the volatility index. It shows overbought and oversold. This signal line will show you the trend direction. And then the TSI is trend strength indicator. It shows early reversal when the green plots start and it shows early exit reversal when the red plots start. It's another good reminder to make sure that you get in and you get out. And then the ERI early reversal indicator, it's the green arrow up means the conditions for a soon upward trend are present. And the red arrow down means the conditions for a soon downward trend are present. And so here we have those two. So um, this is not a current chart. This is just an example. So you see the red arrow down says, or the reversal of things are going down. And then the trend in this particular one is going down. So don't really want to buy when it's constantly going down, has a lot of momentum going down until you know you're at the bottom, which we can jump down to that volatility index. In this example, it's at the volatility index is at 5.40. So the ultra bottom is a zero and 5.48 is not at zero yet, but it's super low guys. Bitcoin does not usually get that low. So it was a very exciting time when I got this slide. And then you have the volatility index. That's my favorite. What I was just showing you guys is the bottom is oversold and then the top green line is overbought. So we're going to jump in. You can remember, you can go to cryptomastery.online to subscribe. And this is about you. So we've got Joe on the line. I'm super excited. And Joe, we can take your questions now. And Joe's going to come on. And we're going to talk at, about the market live. Hello? 
Hi, Joe. We have no Hi. questions so far, so we can do anything. <laughs> Hi, Susie. How's it going? Um, good, good. Uh, well, you know, um, where I'd like to start at, because uh, there is a lot going on, is um, well, really the first place to start if you're someone new, which is um, if we could organize the uh, watch list on Coinbase um, and uh, apply the radar. And, and that way there, like, I wanted to just kind of like organize things like we did before and uh, also uh, be able to show, um, you know, uh, how many markets are actually trending. Because, you know, when we did this last week, the market was a little bit uh, in between. It was on a standstill. And now uh, we've seen the money flow moving into the cross pairs. And there, there was some great success on that. Um, there was some good spikes. Um, but this week in particular, we're seeing the money move uh, more into the uh, supply demand. And um, there you go. Okay. Yeah. So, Susie, yeah. So, yeah. No, I already went through these, but it's good. I'll show everybody what it, how I did it. So, they're already organized. But uh, so, so, you want me to go through it and I'll show everybody really quick? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, if you could. Okay. I'm um, just take note, guys. When I did this slide, mana was up 6%. It's already up 7.97%. That's decentral land. So that means like all the gamer guys are getting back in. So um, if this is a false flag, a lot of people are getting back. So I hope it lasts a long time. Just take profit often. So mana is up for the four hour, one day, and one week. So therefore, I, I coded that flag green. Solana, four day in a week, all green. Comp, all three green. Adam, woohoo, yeah. This Adam is great, guys, because on Coinbase, you actually get staking rewards while you have it too. So that's super exciting. Actually, Joe, while I do this, do you mind if I multitask this? Because I know all of these are green. Can I just show them the... Um, how low it is on the volatility and and look at the ERI chart too. So this is in the red, just because I think it's a, these things are at super low cost right now. And I don't know if we're going to see this stuff this low again. Or do you yeah, want to just look, mention anything about that? Well, no, well, I just want you to keep going because you're doing just uh, okay. excellent. All right. So guys, where I want you to put your eyes right now is look for red. If you have red on the early reversal indicator, it just means that it's it's way an oversold still in volatility index. So it means that you haven't lost a boat yet. A lot of times I get um, FOMO, fear of missing out. <laughs> I'm almost in FOMO right now. I'm feeling it just because I'm like, oh no, no, it's already going up and I missed a boat. So the ferry hasn't left New York yet. <laughs> you can, Or it has left Long Island. You can still get to New York City, I would say. Um, but the TSI, Joe, can you just, and then I swear I'll go through all these. When the TSI is showing up one, two, three, four, five, five weeks on this, like, what is your perspective? Part of me would think FOMO, 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 that means fear of missing out, that I've missed the boat on all of these um, TSIs. Because I know, well, some, of the, know some of the rules are like, get in on the TSI, Sue, get in on the TSI. Yeah, well, if you um, make the chart, a little, uh, the chart a little bit tighter, right, oh and I just kind of like just want to point out is, is that, uh, you know, not all the time are you going to have everything um, in the conditions as they are right now. You know, um, this right here is a case point, whereas, um, you know, we've seen a, a massive liquidation and we're coming out of an oversold condition. But um, you look for the follow through of the other chart overlays. So right now, um, for instance, like we're on a weekly. If you change it to a daily, I just want to show something with a little bit more data. Right. What's uh, important here is 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 that um, when you open this chart up a little bit, is is that there's Maybe more like room to go. Yeah, yeah, like that. Okay. Yeah, just like that. 
there's more room to go on the upside on the TSI. The TSI can come all the way up in here into the blue. And when you look in here, um, okay. just as far as the positioning, you know, first you see in here the um, the market uh, volatility index a couple of times hit down there at the uh, 20. And then you finally see the uh, ERI, which is very important. And the ERI is the early reversal indicator. And we're going to see that a lot on, on a lot of these examples that's going on right now because um, that's what these tools do. They show uh, opportunity, they show clues, and they show uh, how valuable time is. You know, and uh, from when we got that ERI, it was just within a couple of days um, the market finally broke out. And uh, and and you look for the uh, market to move to the upper band, uh, kind of like it is right now, and uh, we're on uh, two count. So I'm just gonna. Um, well, all right, guys. I really want to buy this stuff right now, but I'll I'll just wait. I'll do it on my own. So I'm super excited. I, just so you guys know, what I'm doing is I have two sticky pads. I have one that says weekly, and one that says daily. So as we look at these charts, I'm going to make a note of what I want to buy on a weekly basis and what I want to buy on a daily basis. So what's pretty exciting about this is that on both of these bases, we're still looking good. We haven't gotten to like a seven on this. On a one day basis, it's above the top counter band. So there's a good chance that someone's going to take profit off on this one on one day. So my expectations can't be to just kind of get rid of this in one day. Look, mana went up 31% in six days. So on a daily basis, that's flying high. So you have, Joe, would you say on a percentage of, do you may not know this, but on people that buy daily versus buy and sell weekly, is there a big percentage difference or is that, is that anal an analytical information even out there? Do most traders trade weekly or daily or intraday? Um, well, I mean, look, I think uh, the, this, this constant money flow that's coming into the market, um, you, you know, you're never going to know uh, a specific time. I mean, if we all knew a specific time, there would be no demand to have these tools. You know, what's important is, is what happened as soon as you got the clue. So you got the ERI and then what happened next? And, and that's the value that, you know, presents itself in the clues. Like if you go here over um, to another market, I, just because, you know, we we're just going over this in the report, the Ethereum, right? On the daily. Just to show you. Oh, you want me to look at Ethereum? Okay. Yeah. So Ethereum's in overbought zone on a daily basis. So for well, well, you know, I just want to just point out is is that if we look at the uh, transition, right? All right. If you look at the thirteenth, <clears throat> the R is the um, volatility index, right? Was down there on the bottom, but the market really hasn't uh, moved yet. And this is on the uh, the twentieth. If you if you look on here back on the twentieth. Oh, okay. All right. On on right here. Uh, no. Uh, to the, yes, right there. Yeah. I just want to put it back to like the beginning of the move. Oh, right. With the what do the tools think. say? Because that's what's important here. The tools. Right. We got the first clue when the volatility index was down here at the twenty. Right, and you can see the TSI. Right there, it was oversold. So, you know, we talk about all the time scaling into, into positions, scaling in. So you could have scaled in on, on 25 on the volatility index. You could scale in another 25 on the signal line. You could scale in another 25 on the TSI. And then the final alert is the, uh, what you're really looking for is the trend alert. Now, a lot of times you'll get these conditions and the market might not move right away. 
right? I mean, I mean, you know, it doesn't have to. It can go sideways. It may take more time for the pattern to complete itself. So this is a, a math program. So at that point, if the, the market already put in the clues that the conditions um, are really oversold, and you can see in there how the uh, number count on the trend indicator, uh, it went up to three, and then the number stopped. And then it started again for, yeah, right there. The, now, the reason why the number stopped is because this one here, this chart overlay is, each chart overlay has a, serves a specific purpose. The purpose of this is to confirm that the trend is, the market is still trending. And when you see that the uh, numeric count stops and uh, there's no more numbers, that, that's a clue that the trend could be changing or uh, things aren't going according to plan. Um, and that'll happen in different conditions. But if you look at the last count, right, because the market never put in a new low, it just went sideways. But the last count, uh, that just happened in here, uh, like on the 11th, right there. You can see the new number one uh, that shows and then like this right one here, here was the or... one right there you see the new number one right there yeah right here the new number one print yes this one here we finally got the follow through to the six and and what's interesting so is, we're, is the have... one yeah yeah and what's interesting is is that if you move that over to the left right i just want to show that the one coincides with the eri uh right here oh oh you want me to just move this okay so you want to show that the eri right here yeah i want you guys to see that the indicators how they're simultaneously triggering and so this comes in well the the trend comes in then the early reversal comes in and then the next day the trend strength indicator comes in all in all, the signal line is saying, keep going, keep growing. You know, the signal line's just playing. It, the signal line's at the party the whole time. Like, where are you guys going? Come back, come back. The mathematical <laughs> configurations in these indicators are incredible. Like, how they, collaborate, they collaboratively come together and they just continue to amaze me week after week and day after day how... Like, how did signal line know? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what math you use to make this happen, but it's a phenomenal, um, it's a phenomenal tool, especially when you look back to see how it, how it knew what was coming, or whatever. I, I just don't know how you make this stuff, Joe, but it works. And um, well, you know, not every time it's going to be a perfect setup, but I just. There's certain things in particular that once you start um, utilizing these tools, you'll see um, some things that are repetitive, like just within the math, clues. And right yeah. there, that's a big clue when the uh, one lines up with the ERI because, uh, you know, that may not occur again. You might not see that occur again for another year. But if you're there and you're trading and then you do see that occur, um, that's a perfect opportunity uh, to take advantage of in the market because there, this business is a timing business. And uh, mm -hmm. when you have the great tools, you know, you want to um, be uh, applying those uh, when the opportunity presents itself so you can maximize that opportunity. I want to point out okay. to everybody the volatility index down here. So when you're doing your analysis to make your decisions, so look at the left-hand side on the bottom area right here. This means oversold. So th this is definitely a point where I do not want to buy in. Okay, when I see it in the green, and, and what's going to happen is when it's in the green zone, your early reversal indicator color is going to be green. So this is red because during these time frames, it was in the volatility oversold zone. So red is a fabulous color to buy on. Red is good. Now it's 
black here because it was in the what we call let the cake bake zone. It was in the the no the the not too hot, not too cold. It's like um, so this is like hot to buy almost, right? And this is this is when the pie's out of the oven and it's it's uh it's simmering down. It's uh it, it's cooling off so you can eat the cake. Okay, <laughs> you can't frost the cake when it's at this hot, meaning like it's came out of the oven and it's time to eat it. So take profits. This is when it's baking. The cake is baking. Um, so this point is not a good. So in a way, we are baking the cake right now. So whoever got in here down here, they're letting their cake bake, and then they'll most likely get out when it gets into the green zone. So they could still be baking. So if you get in now you know joe this is a one day chart so i guess it all depends on your time frame like would you be buying while it's already this high or would you have just bought when it was in the red zone well i mean right now um the market could uh keep going up higher uh up until the point where you see that tsi turn red i mean right now the tsi is still green it's not the best place in the world because, uh, you know, buying it, you got to realize that it's on its highs, you know, I mean, and we were in the blue. Um, so, you know, you don't want to go in there and buy a, a large amount. I mean, you know, the number count is on a six. But, you know, you could say, um, I'm going to wait for a new number count and uh, look for, um, you know, the market to pull back from this point to see if the, the trend is is intact. You know, see, it's always difficult, you know, once it starts to uh, go in motion. But uh, I'd say that it's still in play up until the point you see that TSI turn red. When the TSI turns red, then that's when, um, you know, uh, at that point, you know, it's not, uh, you, know, you want to take profits. <laughs> To give a perspective, you don't want guys, to get in. Uh, thank you for that knowledge. I, I love how you explain that, Joe. Uh, in the last 31 days, guys, it's one of 85%. So, but but here, that's like if you're a day trader. So, if we pull out and say, well, hmm, this is a long term, like Mike Novakrat saying that Bitcoin is going to be at 500,000. If you're just going to sock it away for you know a decade, <laughs> we're in 2022 now. He's saying 2027, so he's saying five years. So if you're going in for a five-year hold, then you would look at a one-month chart and say, well, actually, it's not even in the volatility index of a one-month chart really low. makes that little stuff look like nothing but on a one month chart it's not right it's not even look at that so you got to figure out your time frames if you're looking to to buy it and hold it till 2027 it's actually what would you say joe it's not even in a time to buy for that let's see in a one week well oh, one look week. you know i think that uh you know you could depending on what type of trader you are is what time frame that you'll um want to gravitate towards you know so if you're looking at something like that uh, you know you're looking at like more of a longer term one in there um you know the same rules apply on the longer term as they do on the short term but um some of the uh, eminent things uh you know um which are moving like if you change that there to a Bitcoin, right? That chart. I just wanted to show the Bitcoin because I'm looking at it and it looks like it's making a higher high right now. And you change that chart to a daily. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. Okay. And if you can make the chart tighter. 24% in six days. <laughs> that was so exciting. There you go. You know, because this is another one in here where you see the ERI and the ERI uh, shows the clue in there. Now, if you hide that ATR. Okay.
right? I, I just because I just want to just highlight the Kelter band, right? <clears throat> See, when you get the ERI, and if you look at that right there, that's at the lower end of that band. So the lower end of that band was coming down at about uh, 1990 or about 2000. And we got the market price right now, which has moved to the upper end of that band up here. You know, and it's trying to attempt up here to test the 24. Yeah, but it's going beyond. I mean, if you look at that, guys, on a one day chart, can I change this to a one week now to see where we are on a one week? Sure. On a one day, it's above and beyond where, um, to me, it's in the danger zone on a one day. But maybe we'll go a two day and see where, okay, on a two day, it could probably hit the 24 average. On a three day average, 26,000. That's good. On a four day average. So the meaning, guys, is you got to go more into a long term holding perspective. On a four day, it's looking like the top Kelter band is 29,000. On the five, ooh, five days looking good, a 31,000 projected. And on an eight day, 36,000. It gets better. It looks better the farther out we go, meaning the. Joe, just correct me if I'm wrong, but meaning the longer you're willing to hold it, the more likely you have to gain, but you need to have the ability to have the time stamina to hold out. Is that the well, right way I to mean, explain it, Joe? Because you're not going to well, be no expectations of any near time future of getting out of it. Well, well this is the best way. Like, add the radar. Yeah, sure. Okay. The best way well, is to let the tech. Uh, I was just going to say, yeah, there it is. The best way is to let the technology lead the way, right? If the radar is in your favor and you got the daily and weekly, all right, you have so much more in your favor than, let's say, your neighbor next door. Your neighbor next door has a rotary <laughs> uh, dial phone. You have a brand new Apple. <laughs> that was yeah, they're still calling that's me off just, they explain it to you is you know it is that you know you have to really look at the advantage that you have you know and, and the advantage that you have is technology you know and uh that's what um you know, I think allows them here in there to set the right expectation because the radar, you know, once you have the overall trend in your favor and you have that daily and, and the weekly, well, then it, it's it's always good to know how strong like, that's a gauge to how strong that potential movement might be. So right now, as the market is uh, looking to recover here, I'm watching the radar. That's what I'm doing. And uh, as long as the daily and the weekly are up like that, I'm, you know, looking forward to, like, this thing making a full recovery. You know, I, I would love to see it go up to 50000 You know, no one yeah. else wants Bitcoin to go up more than me. Like, let's <laughs> <laughs> to tell you that right now. You know, if I had to go to Washington and go walk, I would walk for Bitcoin to go up. But um, so right now, and we do have uh, a great condition that we see. Um, but uh, and as long as those conditions are applicable there, you know, we want to stay in that direction favored. Because the same way the radar tells us that there's danger, the same way the radar tells us when things are good. Um, and that's all part of the growing process of, you know, acquiring an education. Okay, I'm going to give you guys one more thing to analyze if I have some analytical brains in there. So the line that just made is the current price. So the last time we had this price, I feel like I feel like it's a second chance, you know? <laughs> I'm not an alcoholic, but if I was, I'd be like, yeah, you got a second chance of life, right? Um, so this, this Bitcoin was at this price December 21st, 2020, all right? Now, that's one thing I just looked at. 
let me zone your mind and your brain into this. The volatility index has never been this low. And I just took my little eyes to see like, when was this, when did this exist? Actually, you know what, to be very perfectly accurate, we could just go like this, Think. Okay, I hit it right, was February 25th, 2019. You know those people that say, I wish I could be young again? That's what I feel like. I feel like, oh my God, we're getting this chance to be young again. We're gonna reverse, what, 2019, 20, 21, 22. We're gonna get three years back on our life. I feel like a salesperson right now, and I'm by all means not selling Bitcoin, but I just want you guys to understand the numbers. It's like we're being able to get back to February 25th, 2019 with this volatility index, meaning it's oversold. It doesn't hit that low often. Even right here during this low, this low and slow time was uh, March of 2020. It never got that low. So I'm super excited. I mean, anything you want to comment on that, Joe? How do you feel? Um, Am I falsely excited about this volatility index? But I think this is a super exciting um, statistic. Yeah, I I think right now, you know, um, we have to see. The only time will tell. I mean, as long as the technology is green, um, we're that much closer to that goal. Um, that the big technical numbers come up here up at the uh, 25 mark. So, you know, overall, we need to see a, a close above 25 to change the setting for it to say, okay, well, wait a minute, this thing's really gonna do it, you know? But right now, it it's, uh, has all the uh, conditions applicable for, you know, this market to be going up. You know, I, I um, as you were talking, I, I just wanted to just, uh, I always try to find uh, different examples in real, in real time. Like if you change that chart over to uh, the Litecoin, Bitcoin. You know, Do and, wanna... and the thing is, is that, yeah. And the reason why is, is because the same rule that applies to the buy ERI, conversely, it applies to the sell ERI. And yeah. um, here's an example here. Um, I guess if you, um, your, uh, if you uh, uh, size the chart up a little bit, you can see the first ERI on the first chart. Meaning like, okay, here, want me to just do it like this? It, well, Is that good? if you click, uh, yeah, that's fine. Oh, yeah, I, that's what I wanted to point out. Is that, um, I'm always looking for a, a, an example to show you in here for that you can use and apply in here in real time. On this example here, you know, we have a, a move up with the ERI, and then we have right now a reversal. So it's the same rule applies in there when we're looking at the upside. So if you're in the market, and you get a, a reversal, a red bar on there, and that's why I'm pointing that out. Uh, you know, there could be um, people that are long right now. Uh, I hopefully, you know, you're long and you're in profit. If you get an ERI reversal, you know, you, you want to really get out on that bar because that uh, that really helps as far as getting out of the trade early. Take profit often. So the people that use their Bitcoin to buy Litecoin they just made 52% in 35 days because this is on a one week chart. So now it's time that they sell, which makes sense that you want to sell your Litecoin for Bitcoin to get back into Bitcoin and let that Bitcoin rise. I mean, that's what must be happening. Everybody that bought Litecoin um, they use their Bitcoin to buy Litecoin and now they want to be back in Bitcoin. So it's just, um, you know what it makes total sense is Mike Novakrat said it's redistribution. And but I would say to challenge the redistribution versus accumulation is that overall market cap that we saw when I started this showing that the market cap is at one trillion now. 
where we were tinkering between 8 billion, 9 billion, now we're at 1 trillion. So redistribution, I, I would look a little bit deeper into that because if you have a stable market cap and you have the 1 trillion continuing to go up, it just means money's going back into the market. Maybe someone sold all their oil and decided to get back into crypto. Maybe the whales are getting back in. <laughs> uh, all right. So um, does anybody have any questions? Oh, we've got people talking. So Denville says, don't they say when the VIX goes up, the market does the opposite? All right. So Denville is seasoned in stocks, too. So uh, do you want to answer that, Joe? Um, oh, with the VIX? Yeah, he says, don't they say that when the VIX goes up, the market does the opposite? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's correct. That's the correct, because the, what the VIX does is it measures uh, volatility. So that, that is it, uh, that's a true statement. That's a true statement. You, you know, I was going through here because I was trying to find maybe the biggest gainer so far. Um, you know, like I was looking for something that's really moved because it, a lot of these uh, coins, the ERI has changed on all of them at the same time. So it's like, I know, right. I was, I was going, Joe, you have a question. Yes. So Terry said, you've already touched on this, but could Joe please explain this again? When the daily and weekly radar are green, but the daily is oversold, should I wait to buy, thinking the daily is about to roll over and go down? Well, I I would say in there, which what becomes really important um, is is the other chart overlays. I mean, meaning is 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 that what is the trend indicator doing? What number is it on? So if you um, made that chart. A uh, smaller, uh, a little bit tighter. Okay, and, and you got to merge the um, the scaling on the left to the right. Oh, interesting. So, guys, if you have words here on the left, you go to merge all scales onto the right. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, and and, and you know if um, you're following along. And your chart doesn't look like our chart, okay? Please let us know, um, and then we'll, you know, uh, we'll get you. Make sure that you have the correct settings and stuff, because uh, you know, um, we kind of like transform the chart. <laughs> you know, yeah. Susie. I mean, and 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 when somebody's new and then they first get started, their chart may not look like our chart. So if it doesn't look like our chart for whatever reason. Um, please just send the email across, and we'll we'll make we'll get you something over so that um, you can change the settings and um, have it identical. I think you know that we have. So what Terry's saying, guys, thanks, Joe, is that this is the oversold zone. So she's saying if the radar is saying it's up for the day and up for the week, but it's in the oversold zone, meaning like showing in here. She said, should I well, wait? Well, the, the oversold zone is the red. The overbrought is the green. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so, sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait. What was her question then? Maybe I misunderstand it. Over. I, I call it the take profit zone. So let me just do this. What was her question, she said, when the daily and weekly radar are green, but the daily is oversold. Oh, well, um, remember, when you're on the daily, right, the daily is not going to give you a completion to the end of that day. You can go in there and um, with the time frames, and you notice how we have the four hours. So we got the 240. So I what I use if we're just talking about the radar itself, um, with the radar, the way we have it aligned is really the time frames that that I trade off of, which is a one hour, 
the four hour, you know. Um, once I, I have that confirmation that the daily and the weekly trend is going, um, I utilize those other radars, the four hour chart, and I look at uh, what number we're on on the trend indicator. If we're on a low number, well then there's more room uh, applicable for the, where the trend can go. If the number is on a high number, um, or if the numbers have stopped, well then most likely I'll, um, I'll disregard it or I'll, I'll get out of the position and stuff. So what's, um, what you want to do is, is um, I, sometimes if the color is not consistent, right? If it's in between that gray area, um, look for the four hour chart um, for a better clar uh, clar clarity on what to do. She she said and, uh, sorry. She said it incorrectly, but I think I understood what she meant. She gets mixed up like I do about these. Well, I know what they mean, but I say the wrong thing. She meant that the TSI trend strength indicator is in the overbought, not sold zone. So overbought zone. So we we were, I, I was thinking the right thing. She meant like when it's the day and the week are showing up and it's an overbought. She's basically saying, Joe, when everything's moving up and if it's in the overbought, do I buy? Um, well, I mean, if it if it gets all the way up in there into the blue, when the blue is the right there when it, where the blue is, that's the 80. So if it's all the way up at the blue, right, I would say in there, the higher it gets into the blue, the more riskier it becomes. You know, so if it's in the blue, um, I would pass and go to another market or if you're going to buy, buy less because, you know, um, that TSI oversold is the, um, you know, is, is the, uh, the, the ideal positioning that you want to have right there from when it starts. And once it gets to the other end of the retracement of the oscillator, then that's where you really want to take your profit. Yeah, so Terry, I think, Terry, does that make sense? So the answer is don't buy, like depending on your time frame. You know, if you're wanting to get it out in and out within a week, then if if it's on the day chart, then this is most likely not the best place to buy if it's on the day chart. But if we go and, like going Bitcoin on a weekly basis, um, mm, still someone's going to take profit. So say on a monthly basis, well then yeah, if you want to hang tight for a few months. In having a boring trade place, you just set it now, and forget now, it. Now, Susie, so. right? I, yeah. I think I, I just wanted to, um, if you if you bring this chart up, right? Because this, I think this is an example of what she's talking about. If you bring up QNT, and this is at the Kikoi Exchange. All right, and I didn't realize right, we're you, at, we're 104. I didn't realize we're over time. Sorry, guys, we're super excited. <laughs> right. Oh, beautiful! We change that Jeff. chart to a daily, wow. right? And yeah. I think this is what she really means: is, is that the radar? If you make that chart a little bit tighter, yeah, big, big profit someone's making on quant. Yeah, you know, the radar right now is going like Christmas. You got red and you have the green. But if you look at the TSI, the TSI is in the blue. So, just in just in an example um, to the question uh, is is that if you have a case point here where the TSI is already overbrought and the radar, the, the color in the radar is red and green, um, you know, you want to be taking a profit here. You don't want to be really buying in or, or scale out of your position. You don't have to take a profit on all, everything. You can scale out and then look to reposition the scale in. 
Yeah, beautiful. These charts are great. Okay. So let's see if Terry, does everybody understand that? If you guys can find the questions box, that'd be awesome. We've got Andres, Denvil, Gideon, John, Julia, Levin, Paul, Richard, Sal, Terry. Great to have you guys here. All right, so Denville said, okay, got it oversold, buy oversold, take profits. And Terry says, yes, thanks. Denville said, need to put on a t-shirt. I mean, overbought. Oh, he wants to put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> He's gonna make sure the t-shirt. <laughs> Denville said, I mean, overbought, take profits. Yeah, that's a good t-shirt, I write that down. Denville says, overbought, take profits and he's going to put it on a t-shirt <laughs> i thought that means you were going to put on a t-shirt denville <laughs> he's down in florida guys he's in hot florida baking it up overbought take profits so when you go down to florida to west palm beach and you see overbought take profits denville's the one selling it to the t-shirt stores <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, the they're all they're all chilling in west palm with denville <laughs> All right, man, tank top down there, Denville. All right, so overbought, take profit zone, oversold, buy zone. There you go, put that on a t-shirt, Denville. Well, guys, it was awesome having you today. It's 106, I wanna respect your time. I could do this all day, but truthfully, I wanna jump in and uh, buy some stuff that's uh, ready and ripe and ready to rock and roll. So anything you wanna say, Joe, or does anybody wanna make any comment before you go? Gilio said um, yes, and Den said everyone needs to know. <laughs> Good luck trading, you know, and um, you know, and have a great, have a great, have a great week trading. That's it. Yeah, please Thank do, you. guys. And Adam, oh my gosh, please get your watch list hot and ready, and and um, get your radar and look at this. Adam's at eleven point nine percent since we're talking. Comp is at seven percent up. And uh, remember guys, Adam is one of those ones where you stake it and you get paid a commission to stake it. And my golly gee Molly, you maybe want to unstake that and sell it too because 19 days I went up 56%. Ah! The question is, is like when you're converting it to something else, you could just ping pong this money and convert it on Coinbase from Adam to the next one to the next one because that is soaring so high. That's a that's a take profit zone, right, Joe? Oh, it's that's tempting <laughs> yeah. because look at the momentum. Like this, it's still moving forward. So, uh, wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, guys, I'm gonna jump into the market today. So I can't wait to see you next week. Please let us know what profits you make. That'd be super exciting, and we'll see you soon.